morning, good morning, good morning. How you doing? Um, to all the fathers, to all the men out there, happy Father's Day. <clears throat> um, there's some things I want to discuss. There's some things I want to unpack from my perspective as I was, um, you know, just listening to God and just trying to hear what he has to say in the instructions. Um, I wanted to deal with, uh, and I think it's a good time to deal with it, but I wanted to deal with the man and Father's Day. Uh, when we have these holidays, even with Mother's Day, like a lot of times it's like it's, it's linked itself to the mother and the one and the, and the women that don't have children. It's like you can never, it, it, there's, no, there's nothing there for you. You know what I mean? But um, what I, I disagree um, simply because we, you have man, you have woman and you have mother, you have father. And the Bible talks about how God is a father to the fatherless and a mother to the motherless. And then, of course, practically you think in your head, well, if God's, a, if God's male, right, how can he be a mother to the motherless? That means there has to be a God mother, but there's not. He's so God. He's so uh, omnipotent, you know, omnipresent. Uh, he's so infinite in power and charity that he can be both roles in one person. You, you understand what I'm saying? So when I look at how how the Bible talks about how we're made in his image and his likeness, when I think of mothers and I think of fathers, I think of men and women. I don't, I don't just think of, you know, well, you had a kid, so you're up here and the ones that didn't have a kid, they're kind of down here because how, how God may have designed it the, how it, any way anybody's story has gone is that, especially from a relational standpoint, is that aunties may have been critical, and a woman, if she if she if she never had any children, auntie may have been critical in in in, in dealing with her niece and her niece becoming a good wife and a good mother. You, you understand what I'm saying? And and, and sometimes um, what the enemy wants to do is make if there's absence of a role then there's a absence in, in in identity especially from a gender standpoint you know like if if daddy was never there then i don't know how to deal with my masculinity i don't know how to do a father psh, i don't even know how to be a man i don't even know how to how to how to conduct myself being a boy you understand what i'm saying but the devil is a liar he's a father of lies and because he is um Oftentimes, what we have to look at is the, the the fullness and the and the dynamic of roles and relational status as far as it pertains to titles. So, when I think of fathers, um, fathers give direction and discipline to their children, right? God, the Father, God's role as the life giver, the authority and powerful protector, right? He is viewed as immense. He's viewed as omnipotent. He's viewed as omnipresent. He's viewed as omniscient. And omnipot, omnipot, omniscient. I, can, I always can't get that role right. And he's looked upon as a man with infinite power and charity that goes beyond human understanding. Like, in order to even grasp the concept of God the Father, you have to have faith. You understand? Let's, let's switch it. Let's turn the table now. I'm a father. I have two children. My teenager who's 13, Sanaya, and my youngest one, who's 15 months, Veronica. Veronica's in her crib right now. It, from her view, I, I, I have infinite power. I have charity. Omnipotent. I, I, I'm, a, I'm a protector. I have authority. And I gave her life. So from her viewpoint, as, as, as where she's at in her role as, 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 as child, I am God the Father. Now, not to take nothing away from God the Father. As an adult, 38 years old, there's levels to this. God the Father is everything to me that I said that I was to Veronica. You understand what I'm saying? As an uncle, I am to my nieces and nephews, um, in relational status may be the role that they need to get them to being, you know, father. You know what I'm saying? Like like with my nephews, 
fa father or, or or mentor. So to, if you are a mentor, if you are an uncle, if you're a brother, if you are a father, if you are a baby dad and it's hard to see your kids or whatever, uh, just know that a father is employed to bring, bring their children up in the Lord, in the ways of the Lord, to discipline, tempt, and encourage, comfort, and instruct them. And one of the scriptures, Ephesians 6, 4, says that fathers do not provoke your children to anger, but bring them up in the, di in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. One of the greatest things that we've been called to as men is to have a spiritual relationship. To, can, to, to, to govern our bodies well, to take care of our mental health, and to have a spiritual relationship. Now, I'm a believer of Christ. How does that look like from what I just said? Because I can say that and that's surface, but then you can pull, there's so many things you can pull on to, to, to honor the body, honor the mind, honor the spirit. But does it honor the person who made you, the life giver? So when I look at scripture and it tells me what to do in those avenues, I have to have a relationship with my originator, my creator. Veronica is not my daughter by um, uh, 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 American sta uh, traditional worldly uh, standard. We have to have some kind of relationship. Check this out. Even if we don't want to have a relationship, we'll still have a relationship because she will be affected by how much I invest and how much I don't. I haven't seen my father in 25 years. Now, there's been uh, uh, several powerful men of God as well, too, not just men, but um, influences that have helped me at where I'm at now to give back to not only my children, but my nephews, um, a teenager, a man in my peer group, whatever, because at the core of who I am, I realize in Christ, I am a father. I am of male influence. I am um, of direction and discipline. Um, I, I even have to govern in, in self-leadership. I have to govern the child in me. I have to raise the child up in me in, in maturity. I have to not be so adult-like that I'm not child-like under the gaze of the father. You understand what I'm saying? Um, so when it when Ephesians 6, 4 talks about fathers do not provoke your children to anger. And then I, I, th I stop there and I think about, well, there's another scripture that says, uh, 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 um, um, uh, be angry but sin not. But when I look when I think about the both parallels, I say to myself, okay, the be angry and sin not part must be the maturity, you know what I'm saying, of being childlike. This right here, the beginning of Ephesians 6 4, must must be that the child maybe be on milk. You know what I'm saying? Maybe have to have to really govern govern um 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 uh the understanding and the comprehension of it is um, to be angry. And watch this. Anger, from how I'm viewing it, how the Lord gave it to me, is not an attitude. It's not being in your feelings. It's not having a temper tantrum. That's just immaturity. You understand? Fathers, do not provoke your children to anger. Do not provoke your children to anger but bring them up in the in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. So 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 you have to be brought up. When I when I think of uh, being being brought up, and then the words dis discipline and instruction, I'm looking at strategy. You, both of my daughters, I can't deal with them the same. Aside from age distinction, I, I they're different personalities. You know what I'm saying? Sanaya, very opinionated. She 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 she's a, a wizard in her head, like like intelligent, like this. You ain't, ain't much you gonna get over. It. So you gotta keep, be kind of straight with her all the way, and give room. Watch me, not for narrative, for nuance, because she's very abstract in her mindset. You understand what I'm saying? You know, um, 
from what I can discern from my 15 month old, she's kind of like black and white, like, like yes and no, with not much um, gray area, but her passion leads her into like, if it's no, it's all the way no. Like, like, don't do that. And then she'll go do it. And then when you chastise her, it's it's like passion, uh-huh, like temper tantrum. On the other side, when it's yes, it's all the way yes. You know, fruit of the spirit, you engaging, um, um, lifting an atmosphere up, bringing people together. And I'm talking about a baby who doesn't even speak. She ain't even put a sentence together yet. She just learned how to walk and she want to run. You understand what I'm saying? So when I look at those different dynamics, how can I keep that from not being angry? Uncle, how can you keep that from not being angry? You have influence on some kind of level. Brother, how can you keep that from being angry? You have some kind of influence. You know what I mean? Man of God, you have some kind of influence. And so when we look at these three things, when I say enjoy your Father's Day, I'm saying it to every father. I'm saying it to all men. I'm saying it worldwide any color any creed why because we've been, we've all bowed or not yielded or not it's best that you be bowed and it's best to be you you be yielded but in all things we've been made in the image and likeness of God and we have roles upon being made in the image of likeness of God it's the fullness of a thing like you may think that I haven't had children so I'm not really a father but you don't know the fullness of who you are you don't know the fullness of your impact you're impacting someone. As a matter of fact, the older you get, you're impacting the child in you. Because at the core of who you are, you can't get away from leading. You can't get away, get away from influencing. You can't get away from it. You understand? So, happy Father's Day to all. And um, may you continue to be a blessing in the people's life that you influence and even how you govern yourself. You know, may the Lord continue to deal with you concerning Ephesians 6, 4. You know what I'm saying? Where even if it's your peers, you are willing to be a child, um, to be fathered, and you're, you're, you're trusting enough in the relationship that you won't be provoked to anger and that you be open enough and humble enough to be brought up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. Because, the, because see, check this out. Even if the man don't believe, right? The principle still stands. If he has any semblance of, of, of morality, even if it's young blood, you know, the old school cats used to say, young blood, don't do what I did. That's wisdom. That's wisdom. That, that, that's him give, sending out a lifeline to the next generation that's going to continue the story. That's him putting down his narrative and putting down his hurt and putting down his anger and putting down his anguish and saying, son, go do better. The, the Bible says when Jesus went to the cross, he said, and you will do greater works. He's all perfect. And he died for me who's flawed and I'm going to do greater works. So so when I, when, when I look at those dynamics, enjoy your Father's Day. Let this be a culmination and another birthday and another celebration of your manhood. You know, whether you're five being fathered and you're learning or you're 25 and, and your uncle and you just love your nephews you know and nieces you have impact you have influence and oh, whether you're a friend and you making sure that that other friend or that other brother or that other sister don't go off the ledge in life and you a safe place to land and you're good counsel and your therapy men of men of god that's how i come to you whether you believe or not i, I if you don't believe i prophesy men of god saints know where I'm coming from. Be of good influence and be great in your levels and in your phases and in your chemistry and in your strategy and in your government of manhood. Masculinity matters. Hear me. Because it sets the course of God's design. And if we can engage in God's design, it'll help us stay on the narrow road. I love you. God bless you. Enjoy the day and um, make sure you avoid as much traffic as possible. <laughs>